Hello, I'm Douglas Galasco, a neurologist at UC San Diego in California, USA. And I'm taking the point of view that CSF alpha synuclein is a useful biomarker for Parkinson's disease. As you will see, I am going to vote yes, but with some nuance and caveats. To think about biomarkers, it's useful to address how the FDA perspective has evolved. In 2018, the FDA produced a document describing context of use of biomarkers. And while this is in the application of clinical trials, the terminology and the context of use is still very helpful for general applications for biomarkers. So looking at this, in particular, thinking about CSF alpha synuclein, one might think about applications for diagnosis, disease monitoring, um, prognosis, or pharmacodynamic responses as some of the uses one might apply this biomarker to. Why should we think about alpha synuclein and in particular in CSF in relation to Parkinson's disease? Alpha synuclein is central to genetic and sporadic Parkinson's disease, where it builds up in accumulations and aggregates within neurons. The alpha synuclein protein has been widely studied, and many things can go wrong with it in relation to Parkinson's disease. It's not clear whether there is a single final common um, abnormality, but for example, Mutations, changes in expression, truncation, phosphorylation, nitration, association with lipids may be related to oligomer formation and oligomers of synuclein themselves may be toxic or they may trigger aggregation into protofibrils and larger aggregates and these may eventually trigger prion-like spread. So it, we, it would be useful to see whether we can have biomarkers to measure these phenomena. CSF alpha synuclein has been assayed in CSF and it is consistently found to be decreased in Parkinson's disease and other synucleinopathies. This slide shows a meta-analysis of a number of published studies. Um, the decrease begins at least in prodromal stages of Parkinson's disease, for example, in REM sleep behavior disorder. However, the sensitivity and specificity of alpha synuclein is not high enough for this to serve as a useful standalone diagnostic test. And so what could we do with CSF alpha synuclein? Perhaps measures of other forms of synuclein or other biomarkers could benefit from being normalized against CSF alpha synuclein. And from a biological point of view, we don't have an absolutely clear understanding of what causes the low CSF alpha synuclein. It might be a phenomenon of synuclein aggregating and not getting out of neurons, or it might have something to do with neuronal excitability. That is one of the mechanisms that leads to synuclein being released into CSF. So to be able to use it, we should have a slightly better understanding of what it's measuring, but nevertheless, there may be some uses even now. How about modified forms of alpha synuclein? They certainly exist within neurons and they can promote aggregation and toxicity. We don't know for sure that they get into CSF. There are many reported studies of synuclein uh, modifications, for example, phosphoserine 129 or oligomeric synuclein in CSF, but these are inconsistent. Some of the limitations include insensitive assays and reagents that are not always specific enough. Um, however, I would say that the absence of consistent evidence is not evidence for absence, and I think we should um, continue to look harder. If one thinks about oligomeric alpha-synuclein, a number of laboratories have developed assays and published I've illustrated a recent publication from 2020 in which levels of oligomeric synuclein in CSF showed slight differences in uh, sporadic Parkinson's and asymptomatic and symptomatic lock 2 carriers. And the 
separation from normals was markedly improved if the oligomeric measure was expressed as a ratio with total synuclein. So this is promising, um, but a is another recent publication that rigorously looked at at least 10 different antibodies that were supposed to be oligomeric or oligomer specific um, and most of these antibodies failed the tests and did not have the required specificity. So greater standardization is needed but I would say there is <clears throat> some initial promise and Future research should focus on improving and perhaps sharing reagents to try and understand what we are measuring and how best to measure it. So turning to applications to therapy, <clears throat> there was a recent publication looking at Ambroxol in which longitudinal CSF alpha synuclein was measured. And while this was a small study, um, and um, was done using a dose of ambroxol that um, looked promising in cell-based and animal models. And the results showed that following treatment, there was an increase in CSF alpha synuclein, which tends to point to a direction that it's correcting an abnormality, together with a decrease in, um, in GCA's activity. So it's possible that as a result of the mechanism of action of the drug, there is a shift from intra to extracellular alpha synuclein, and perhaps this could do good things in terms of mitigating aggregation. And one could see that in this case, CSF alpha synuclein could be used as a biomarker to support the further development of ambroxol. There's been great interest in immunotherapy for alpha synuclein. And I've illustrated one study in which an antibody called MEDI1341 was raised against alpha synuclein and tested in a model in which <clears throat> lentivirus is injected unilaterally um, into the hippocampus in a mouse. This leads to overexpression of alpha synuclein and aggregation. And over time, aggregates can be seen in other brain areas. As can be seen from figures F and G, um, treatment with the antibody leads to a reduction in the um, accumulation of synuclein pathology over time. The antibody has also been studied in relation to interstitial fluid within the brain. And looking at total alpha synuclein, treatment with the antibody decreased ISF levels of alpha synuclein in a monkey. For antibodies, using alpha synuclein and CSF as a readout is much trickier. It binds to the N terminal, for example, and simply depletes CSF of alpha synuclein. This might not tell us anything about whether it's going to work or not. And the authors in this paper were cautious, but suggested that the phenomenon of secretion of synuclein includes secretion of normal forms and some bad forms, and perhaps this is a marker that the antibody is getting into the brain. So I would still say that there are caveats for immunotherapy and we need to uh, perhaps develop a bigger panel of um, CSF synuclein tests to apply it to that use more carefully. So in summary, <clears throat> my yes vote relates to context of use for alpha synuclein as a biomarker. Regarding diagnosis, I don't believe it can serve as a freestanding test, but it can be used to normalize other biomarkers. And there is the potential for further studies of post-translational modifications and oligomers. I don't believe CSF alpha synuclein, based on data so far, is a prognostic marker. And I do believe that it can be used in certain situations <clears throat> to monitor target engagement as a monitoring or pharmacodynamic marker. It's possible, as I said, that correcting the cellular handling of alpha synuclein may <coughs> correct the decreased levels of CSF synuclein, and then some caveats, but promise about monitoring the effects of immunotherapy. Thank you.